You just tuned it in. Global and worldwide. Hit me on the one with no delay. Because it's the, the Fighter's voice. Voice, voice, voice. The Fighter's Voice. With your fighting host, Richard Ortiz. And the formidable co-host, Mr. Cole Escovito. Remember, every fighter has a voice. Ladies and gentlemen, finally the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio Show live here in Fresno, California. Mad Studio Productions, I want to say, or Production Studio. Either way, mad it's mad. Either way, it's mad. It's it very, is. it's M-A-D. very upset. It's very upset. Like earlier, our equipment was very upset, but we're here. We're ready to rock and roll for you, the viewers, the listeners. But before we get started, we got to pay some bills. Cole, knock out these bills, my man. Man, like you were talking about, one of our top places, the new studio. We just got Mad Productions and Entertainment here in Fresno. That's yes, one of them. Dying Breed Gear and Apparel. They're still hanging out with us. Dying Breed. Bobby Salazar's salsa. Dude, this stuff's so hot, Bobby bro. Salazar's. I, I have to right. eat this so slowly, dude. It hurts so bad. Just like you're hurting my ears, but keep going. Man, sorry. Coach B, Bat Cave Boxing with 12 rounds of boxing over in Clovis. Professional and amateur boxing, physical fitness. Just follow Coach B. He's got an Instagram. It's Coach 1971. So his Instagram yeah, at, at Coach, Coach 1971. 1971. To the Bat Cave. To the Bat Cave, as yes. you go. And uh, tell them the TFV has sent you. And yes, the Fighter's Voice. Richie Productions, baby. And all day out. long, all day long. Listen, and it's streaming live on my Facebook page, Richard Ortiz, by the Fighter's Voice live stream team. I like the way that sounds, live stream, stream team. team. Make sure to look for it on the official Facebook page of the Fighter's Voice. And our Facebook page, The Fighter's Voice, with highlights on our Instagram, at The Fighter's Voice. So please follow us there. Leave a comment on our live stream feed. Tonight's show is engineered by, man, there's three of them. Oh, we man. got Mr. Rao. We got Yolanda. We got Mr. KP in the house. You know, a three-team. A three-team. I like that. Like three a three-peat, three-team. Three with that side, the co-host with the most, Mr. Co Escovito, the Apache Kid UFC veteran, is in the house. Also, we have top ranks, undefeated, undisputed. Now, I'm going to go on and on. Undefeated, top rank from Fresno, Isidro Ochoa is in the house. He's going to talk to us about his victory in Fresno, California, what the future holds. And we're going to talk about that show, The Contender, with two locals that are on there and they appeared on there and they went to war and it was a great great we can battle talk, we can talk, you can talk about it oh yeah we can talk oh, about okay, that yeah cool. well we're definitely going to talk about that and later on in the show we as we as we know we got a segment it's called cole's beatdown and we're going to be Beat talking down. about the world of mma the world of what's going on so if you have any questions or comments you know what come on our stream team because we got a lot going for you today on the show the entire show we're going to talk non-stop about the contender about mm. Marcos Madman Hernandez and Daniel Valdivia going at it on national TV. It was like a plate of comida. All you, <laughs> all you can eat and have fun. You like to eat and have fun, right, Isidro? Oh, yes, I do, of course. Oh, step up to the mic, my man. Yeah, of course I do. I know you like to eat because you're not training right now. So when you're training, you're, you, know, you can barely drink water and maybe you know, a couple leaves and a branch or what have you. you <laughs> know, like koala bear. Yeah. yeah, but now, I mean, you're able just to be between fights. Not indulge where you're out of fight weight, but you're able to have a nice meal and enjoy yourself yes of course and we're gonna have a recap later on guys at the 559 fights fresno california the entire team was there the fighters voice mm-hmm. entire team was there covering it we're gonna give you some feedback actually they got another show coming up i believe in november but you know i can go on and on and on but i want to give the mic to the guests right now and i want your feedback on everything i want your feedback on how fresno is is exploding in combat sports an mma mm-hmm. boxing muay thai Karate, judo, you name it. Or just somebody's kicking somebody's ass in the parking lot. <laughs> Talk to us, C.C. Joe. What's going on in your life, my man? Welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Long awaited, man. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you know what? Let's talk about your victory in Fresno, California. Oh, yeah. Well, I followed September 14th uh, here at Fresno against a really good fighter. Yeah. Um, he came to fight. You know, yeah, he did. He came to fight, gave him respect, but... Took care of business, took him out in the third round. Took him out in the third round. Let's talk about that second round. You know, when he came to take care of business, because you were swapping in there. You stood in the pocket, and I like that. I mean, that's you're, you're a fighter, so you're here. You, the, the game is he's going to try to hit you. You hit him. You know, he landed a, a one shot, and, and it seasoned you, and it matured you instantly, and now you have that experience. Been there, done that. You could take that, put it in your back pocket, but I like what you did the round afterwards. 
tell us once once he w- was successful with the, with the combination, and when he went back to the corner, how did Robert Garcia, Hall of Fame trainer, how did he instruct you just to put it behind you and to move forward? He's like, hey, you know, just keep your head up because it happens. It could happen to anybody, but you know what? What matters? You were able to stay strong in the round. And then I remember him telling me, you got to go back to your jab. You know, you're a boxer. You're not a, a brawler. You know, you have a nice jab. He said, you know, try to find that jab again. And after you find a jab, you're going to see all these openings. And that's what I started doing. Cole, when you get, when you get rocked or you get your, uh, your opponent gets your attention, I know instinct takes over. But when you get, when, before you get coherent or before you get your, your faculties back, is it almost normal just to go with, with the jab to move around or just to let your hands loose? It, it, like I said, it's uh, it's really autopilot. It, it, no matter, autopilot. You know, no matter what you can do about it, it's going to be autopilot because you're going to go back to whatever your training was. Like Tyson, all the time, used to just come back to this. He just, no matter how many times they tried to w- breed that out of him, right. it's just when he got tired or he got hurt, this always, in his mind, this always meant you're not getting knocked out if you do this. So yeah. any defense he had... If he got hurt, he would immediately shut that down because it just this worked. Yeah. So the, if the jab, when you're hurt or tired, if the jab is what works for you because in your brain you've trained, keep him at bay, keep him at bay, keep him at bay, shake it off, shake it off, okay, go. You're just going to revert right back to that unless you really work something just for this guy. I mean, that's – no, I don't think anybody works with the expectation of getting hurt, though. Like, like here's what you yeah. do if you get hurt. Yeah. No, no, that's – like, if you get shot, they can't teach you what to do if you get shot. <laughs> I noticed uh, when he landed his uh, shot that you you went you wanted to go tit for tat. I mean, you loaded up and you came out that third round instead of like trying to get your legs back. You already had your legs. You just came loading up and said as if to say, "Hey, this is my hometown. You're in my ter- ter- territory, and, you, and you're about to pay." Oh yeah, when I came back to the corner, I was out a little bit, but I was like, I woke up. You know, I was like, "Damn, he just got me good." Yeah. Got to go back out there and make him. I won't pay, make him pay for it, and that's what I did. I just felt like I was just so much in sh- good shape that I I, hit, I, was, I was back to myself by the time the third round started. Now, when you landed that looping right hand, I believe it hit him on top of the head. And when he went down, he was belly on the canvas. Did you know he was out? Did you know he wasn't getting up? I, uh, yeah, because what I heard him was the uppercut. Yeah. I seen him when he stepped back. I seen the way he was looking. I was like, yeah, he ain't going to get up. I wish we had some footage right here, guys, because I remember that fight. I was right there. And as soon as you landed that looping right hand, you already turned your back. And you started celebrating because you knew he wasn't getting up. I noticed you were looking at the crowd already. You, yeah, kind of a walk. Yeah. You kind of waited to about maybe a five count, and you, and you you said to yourself, "This guy isn't getting up." And you turned around and started acknowledging what what took place. You just man. know sometimes, dude. Like that's why I wanted to ask him, it, dude. And you just know that that's they're done. Like you can see by the body, like because you'll move. Fighters will move a certain way when they get hit. He'll get hit. He'll turn move, and you'll see him turn back. The second you hit a guy, he just doesn't turn back for like that split yeah. second. You know he's going to keep going that way. You know it. It's just you Cole, can tell. He wasn't on his back. He was on his belly. Oh. I mean, he's looking at the canvas. Yeah, dude. That's so, done. I mean, if it were me, though, I would have been racking on him. I, I knocked a dude out cold and then dove on him, but that's different. Like, oh, okay, like, 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 like Hendo. Yeah, no, I did that to um, – um, uh, damn it. Yoshiro Maeda in Japan. Okay. Like out cold, stiff, out, yeah. done. You can tell, done. But in that sport, you, Just can't, the moment. you can't walk away. You, the ref doesn't – you have to keep going. Like Just. I saw him go back and thought, oh, this is going to suck for him. You know, and I've had it done to me, too. I've had really bad done to me that same way. But with boxing, yeah. you could just tell. Some dudes walk away, bah, you just hit him, he crumbles. He's going. He can go. He's night. Wow, I remember that. How did that victory feel, knowing, wow, I got it done? Because we, we spoke, and those – first of all, you were supposed to face Victor Morales from Oregon. Tough guy. Young man. Signed with top rank. Undefeated. Great team. It was, I expected fireworks. That would have been fight of the night, in my opinion. But although Ramirez just put on a classic show, not to take anything away. But yet, you went a couple days not knowing if you're going to compete or not. And we spoke right off camera. And I said, look, just continue to, to work out. You're going to fight. Put on that mindset. You're going to fight. Don't turn it off. So I, I can see that you were just so relieved, first of all, that you got an opponent. And then you got that victory in your hometown of Fresno. Yeah, I was a little really disappointed if I wasn't going to get an opponent because I felt like I wanted to show my skills. But it ended up getting an opponent. But, yeah, I just, man, it was, that punch got me good. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's a learning experience. How much time we got there? That's a learning experience. I heard you mention uh, his opponent, his original one was signed by Top Rank. You're signed by Top Rank too, right? Yes. So how's 
in, in boxing, I know it's probably different. Top rank would be like what? The management company that you're signed with? Yeah, a promotion company. Okay, so they just have, they just sign multiple guys and have them still fight each other? They're, hey. Because I know like MMA, it's you fight for the UFC, but you're signed with uh, Richard Ortiz management yeah. or, you know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah. So it's, it's, so it's just a bunch of you guys are all signed under one banner and then it's just. They're looking for the next Sugar Ray Leonard, uh -huh. Oscar De La Hoya, so and the list goes everybody. on. Yes, they just sign everybody. They exactly. Can. Yeah, well, the top guys. Yeah, if but they're they, interested they in you. They try to just snatch absolutely. you up whenever. Absolutely, they can and snatch some you and up. sometimes not in this case. I won't say this case because I'm not getting into the politics of it. Sometimes they just got to cut the fat. Yeah, but I don't see it too much Manteca when they're both undefeated, both Mexican American I, that bring it. Yeah, and both with a following and both young careers. I would imagine being. And I'm not saying you are by any means, so don't take this the wrong way. I can imagine being in boxing, being a boring fighter, but having an undefeated record is almost like job security versus you know MMA. what? You I know one before. right now, but I'm not even going to go there. But I know have, one right think? now, but I just said I know one right now, but I'm not even going to go there. So you can be boring and have an undefeated, but have job security because people will still watch you because you're undefeated. Whereas in MMA, if you're boring, you could you could be an undefeated fighter, but if you're boring, yeah, who? Yeah, exactly. Ooh, exactly. Exactly. So, is it different in boxing? Do you find that it's they want ticket sellers? A crowd. I want excitement. I don't yeah. care if you're twelve and seven, okay. but you bring the noise. So the variable. You're, you're a fan. Abso absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You can throw those seven out the box because so be it's what you do. And yeah. If you can't do an interview or sell a shirt <laughs> or sell a ticket, they're like, whatever, dude. Some can do Instagram and Facebook, but uh, they got all the skill set. And uh, you know, I won't say too much because I'm not a fighter, mm. but in a sense, I am. Maybe not in the ring. In you you got to be mark. You got to be marketable. Do something with your name. Do something with your record. Why do I want to see you again? Mm. Every I, I see so many fighters coming to this into the sport or even boxing. Maybe it's just the same, but in MMA for sure they come in like, oh, I'm just gonna be a badass. I'm just gonna kick ass and take names and this and that. And it's like, cool. I'm gonna ask you a question. You have five seconds to answer. Go. And they'll go. Oh well, it's like done. Next interview. Yeah, if, they, exactly. if you can't answer that question exactly. articulately in five seconds, you really have to reevaluate. Listen, listen to this, Ocho. This is this is marketing because it's not a, it's not 1996 anymore, no. where it's sport versus sport, and it's just whoever the baddest guy is is going to be ombre for the night. Mm -hmm. It's now you can be okay in the ring, entertaining, win fights, lose fights, but outside of the ring, everybody wants to hang out with you or hear yeah. what you're doing. If you can't do that, or at least if you don't accept that that's part of being a fighter, exactly. you're, why are you doing it? Exactly. It's part of it. You know, it's almost that saying, a champion inside and outside of the ring. Yeah. But you got to be marketable. Mm -hmm. you got to be marketable. And talking about marketable, I know November 2nd, I'm not going to touch too much of it, but the Beast Blake... He is a promoter's dream. I mean, he just markets himself constantly. I hear that name. He tags you. He's doing something. He's at the ESPYs. He's on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. He's in the ring. He's on TV. He's holding his son. He's just completely sold out to marketing. And the dude can fight. Yeah. I so I mean, about him last week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I know there's another guy, and I'm not going to stir anything up. He's out of Oregon called Mike White Delight. Mm. I went there, bro. Tony, I went there. I went there. I want to see that fight. That is going to take place. The Beast and White Delight. White Delight from Oregon and the Beast from Sacramento. Is it, is it the light They're both crew. Yes. Yes. Because I did a show there in Oregon and I said White Right or something. He goes, No, brother. It's White Delight. He's a cruiserweight undefeated and so is Blake. Mm -hmm. But see, we got to bring Mike out of Oregon. And that's a whole different segment that's, and meet out of neutral, that's easy. neutral yeah. zone because Blake can throw down. Mm. I mean, well, I would love to see that. It's, I get chills talking about that. It sounds that way. I heard they got into it uh, verbally in Fresno. Oh? Yep, yep. So speaking about verbally, you know what? We got to verbal some of these commercials right now. We got to get some of these jokes right now out of the way. Is that how much time we got left? We only got, man, we're, we're rocking and rolling right here. But you know what? Segment number two we got coming up, ladies and gentlemen, it's called Cole's Beatdown. We can go on and on and on. Show it to me, please. It's called Cole's Beatdown. We're going to come back, pay these bills. We're going to talk about Bobby Salazar's. We'll be coming right back here with the fighter's voice. Remember, voiceography at its finest. Every fighter has a voice, and so do you. Oh, it ain't over yet, but we got to keep the lights on around here, not to mention the mics. Stand by. We'll be right back. With voiceography at its finest. It's the fighter's voice.
You just tuned it in. Global and worldwide. Hit me on the one with no delay. Because it's the, the Fighter's voice. Voice, voice, voice. The Fighter's Voice. With your fighting host, Richard Ortiz. And the formidable co-host, Mr. Cole Escobedo. Remember, every fighter has a voice. And so do you here on Knockout Radio 1010. I like the way that sounds. Knockout Radio 10, 10, 10, 10 for the 10 count. Speaking of the 10 count, it's this time of the show, ladies and gentlemen, where we talk about the world of MMA. What's going on in the world? What's going on in Fresno, Madeira, Cali, but most of all, Global. And it's called Cole's Beatdown. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the premiere of Cole's Beatdown. Man, it's always something new, isn't it? It's always something new. We're waiting for that to come up. It'll be coming up any time now. Waiting on my... uh, Engineer guys getting ready to soup it up, cut it up. Stay strong, fight fans. Hold your breath no longer. It's time for Cole's Beatdown, where someone always gets knocked the f*** out. Look out, look out, look out, look out. Oh, man. We'll come around to that. I like yeah. it. We'll come around. A um, couple things, not a lot. Just touch base on some things. Um, there was a little bit of a rumor going around for a second that Khabib might have been out with like an knee surgery. That's bull that's total bull it's junk it's we just saw my dude mike yeah, interviewing him yeah it's totally good that's what i was gonna say because yeah. of that too it's totally fine I, I figured it out that day okay um so that's still on for october 6th that's still going down uh what we got coming up around here fresno selling arena this friday lfa legend uh, legacy fighting alliance 51 yeah 51 lfa 51 cody gibson versus gustavo eric i want to say eric or eric i can't yeah I'm, he's brazilian i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it right but it's gustavo versus cody cody's local boy out of Visalia. A uh, lot of fanfare. I that place is going to be so packed. It's the renegade. So yeah, the renegade is going to get that place so hyped, dude. It does. They, he's a teacher. He's got a family. He's just dude's like a nice model. Guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's just a really nice guy. It's just, Don't you remind me of Wonder Boy a little bit? A little bit, like little a smaller bit. version, maybe yeah, kind of yeah. predating Wonder Boy a little bit. Maybe <laughs> yeah. Wonder Boy just got the right time, the right place. But yeah. Cody's, um, he's like a step above uh, journeyman. He is like a journeyman is a guy who just like travels through life fighting, collects paychecks. That's what they do for a living, gym life, this and that. Yeah. He's like a step above that because he's actually constantly trying to fight tougher opponents and get back into the UFC, get back up the ladder. He wants he's hungry still. He's gotten himself into that mindset of I can still do this and he can. So and he knows that and he believes it. So He's constantly <clears throat> testing himself. He's always trying to take on tough opponents. And this is LFA is a great organization for him to be doing it with. So um, there's that. That'll be this Friday. Sell and Arena. There's still tickets. So if you want to go, check it out. Support a local guy. You know That's going to be local MMA. Cole, I just want to know a couple things. One, I want to know who's ring announcing. Two, and who's commentating. Man, I know. I'm right? going to have to look into that. We're going to have to look into that. Listen, if you guys are listening, get a hold of the fighter's voice. Get a two for one or one for two. Get a ring <laughs> announcer. Get a commentator. Get a boxer, get whatever you need, a videographer, we come ready to equip and ready to serve you, the fighter's voice. Um, Other than that, nothing new on Chuck Liddell or Tease. They haven't really announced any much more of the card. They've done a little promo stuff. Golden Boy's not really letting out too much yet. I imagine we'll get some more in the next, like, week or two at at best. Um, But the other uh, other thing I want to touch on was Joe Lozon, MMA fighter, UFC (laughs) fighter Joe Lozon, to have a knee surgery today. So anybody who knows him, follows him, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Hit him up, see how he was after his surgery. So once he has that done, uh, should be a little bit of recovery, and then he'll be moving on again. I want to talk about our dude, Mike. Mm. Mike, I just inboxed you right now. I see you th- that you're interviewing Habib right now. <laughs> and I inboxed you and said, tell him about the Fighter's Voice radio show. Bring him down here. We'll go up there, make it happen. First of all, hey, man, kudos to you, man. You're interviewing the champion of the world, and that's going to be great. Right? No, it is. I mean, he's right there. He's everywhere. He's, he's got the interview before, before Did, the did you know that um, George Lopez could have been his father-in-law because he was dating his daughter on the show? Well, hold he was on, the actor, on, right? Back that up. Okay. You know he's an actor, right? Yeah. Mike, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, he played Valencia, right? the boyfriend of George Lopez's daughter on the George Lopez show. That show's still on? Well, it's syndication. You make oh, money. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So he yeah. plays like a grown-up daughter's boyfriend version? Well, I mean, when he was younger. Yeah, okay. I yeah, got you. That's him. Oh, okay. Had a little more hair and stuff. <laughs> but I like what he's doing, though, man. He's actually going to make a fit for, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, make a little uh, skit for the fighter's voice. Oh, he's always doing something. I always see Mike posting stuff, either yeah. work he's done. And he actually wants to come on, on the show. 
Dude, totally. He's he's a fun guy. He's no, he he, he wants to come, he wants to come on the show. But I don't want to forget about who we have on the show, and he has some boxing news for us. We need to get your own segment. Bring you on the show. Get you some some following. Get you some notoriety. Just get you going right here, Mister Ochoa. And you got some news to share with the world, the viewers. First here on the Fighters Voice. Don't say second. Did you tell somebody else already? Nah, nobody knows. Did you didn't you, tell your mom? <laughs> Man, she's gonna hit you with a shoe when oh, you. Oh, I know with the uh, chancla. <laughs> she's gonna whip your butt, dude. And the tortilla, especially if you interrupt her when she's watching a novella. If she's old school, yeah. huh? Don't mess Can't, with don't, mom's oh, stories. Dude. You mess with oh. mom's stories, you get you get the shoe for <laughs> sure, uh, dude. You get the chancla and then pawera at the same time, man. <laughs> Ochoa, tell us what's going on, man. Give us the news, my man. Uh, I should be leaving here, going back to camp in two weeks. I got another fight date, December 1st. Nice. I don't know where it's out yet, but yeah, I talked to, finished talking to Robert yesterday, so December 1st will be the next fight. Can I tell you where I heard it was? Where? No, I can't say that because that's kind of disrespectful. You need to know first. But I'll tell you later on when we get off air what I, where I heard it was. And I was going, really? I'm there. We're there. The whole team is there. How can we not go support Isidro Ochoa from Fresno? What I like is is your manager probably knows, but all he needs to worry about is what's my next fight exactly. date. Exactly. So I know when do I start camp, how far out do I have to start. He's like two weeks I go back to camp. So he knows that date, camp, time. Mm-hmm. He's got a little bit of uh, – a little bit of you can, you can enjoy what? Uh, Halloween, you can enjoy what Thanksgiving? No, that's gonna be already done, huh? Yeah, you don't get to enjoy none of that. Ah uh, oh, man. Yeah, I'm I'm gone over there Halloween. Get close to the mic, my man. I'm gone for Thanksgiving and Halloween. Man, it's dude, okay. I used to hate I used to hate Thanksgiving and Halloween and all the real yeah. fun holidays for food holidays. Yeah. For cutting weight, dude, bro, oh, I was the worst, dude. It was like, oh, dinner this, dinner that. Oh, no, I'm so hungry. <laughs> but cool. So de- December first. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Hey man, they ask, they tell you when your fight date is, and you just say okay. Can I it. okay? Can I? Can we ask this? M- money aside, will will he be flying anywhere? Will he be flying anywhere? Will he be flying? Oh anywhere? oh oh, um. I mean, he could. Is it, if, okay, so it's like close he, enough that he, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, no we'll, we'll, we'll just say it, it's at a big auditorium, like it, it's a forum type place, oh. and it's it's. From what I heard, man, and, it, and it's gonna be great, man. <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> That's just what I, I, I can't be giving out where I'm getting all no, the stuff, or I'm not gonna like be. It. It's just like I like he gets to travel. That's no, exactly seriously. getting to travel. No, 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 like no, the best, no. He gets to knock someone the hell out. Somewhere is what he gets yeah, to do. No, but just dude, I'm yes. telling you, like to see the world, see the state, travel, meet other people, meet new fans. Meet new crowds, oh, dude. Even if you're booed, dude. I, there's always, always people in the crowd after that. Even if they were booing for you before because you're fighting their local guy, if you win, dude, they're like, yeah, they're, you're, you're gonna make fans. I mean, you're gonna make provided you don't get up and just like flip off the crowd or something or just you know embarrass yourself. No, nah, you're, you're gonna do good. You're gonna do good. I what what weight is it gonna be at? Uh, I'm not too sure. Probably 126. 126. Okay. Okay, I'm looking forward to it, my man. So you said December 1st, and you'll start camp in two weeks? Uh, Well, one week, because I'll I'll leave next week. Okay, so how far out do you start monitoring your weight and starting to decide what you need to do? Start slimming down meals? Do you start... Like a month? Good month. Okay, so four weeks out from the fight date itself? Four or three weeks. For from the date? I'm usually like 10 pounds over. So you you shoot for the date, or you shoot for the weigh-ins before? The weigh-ins. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Hey, you know what? I want to say this. Look, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I got right here from Isidro Ochoa. Right after the fight, he threw him out Dude, to you me. Know how hard it is to he get threw him out to me, gave him to me, Richard Ortiz, and then he turned around and said, "Thumbs up for Richie." So he's gonna sign it right now that we're going on right here. You can sign it in black right here. You know how hard that is to get fight wraps intact after a fight. Those things get yanked off so bad. Like you have to specifically cut them down the middle and be careful. Hey, well, I mean, he has a great corner, so they know what they're doing. Now, when you say fight camp, we're talking about Robert Garcia, the Hall of Fame trainer, correct? Yep. Robert Garcia. Oh, yeah, you're, you're leaving. Where are you going? That's right. You were talking about you're going to go for your next camp. Is going to be out of town, yeah? Yeah, Riverside. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, go to Robert Garcia. Now, Richard. when you go down there, do you, do you bunk at the camp? Is it at the gym? Do you bunk with friends, family? How's that work? No, they have a, he has his own uh, like, place. Like a stable? Yeah, he, has, like, a, he got a house. That's what I'm talking like, about right, right here. here. Right All day long, baby. That's what I'm right talking about right here. Thank you. Dude, that's, uh, that's cool. Frank, um, Frank Shamrock used to do that. 
Yeah, Frank no, Shamrock. Yeah, Ken, no. Ken Low Shamrock die. used to Lions do Lion's Den. Lion's Den used to yeah, do that. Sir. Ken Shamrock, not Frank. Ken started yeah. it. Let me make sure I get Well, no, well, actually, no, let me correct you. His father started well, it. Yeah, his father, he, Bob. Yeah, Bob started Bob. it. Yeah, he started with the boys' adopted home. Them, yeah. Yes. Started with yeah. the boys' home. I can't see the, the Ken, thing up there. Ken it's blank. It. Ken yeah. turned it into the, the boarding of fighters and stuff. Yeah. He started the whole, you give us a percentage of your fight purse, and you get a delivery from board for exactly. training and all that stuff. Exactly. So I, I like that method. I, I like that. that I like that. And you know what? I like it so much. We're going to take a commercial break. We're coming right back with a big recap here in Fresno, California, the Fighter's Voice. Oh, it ain't over yet, but we got to keep the lights on around here, not to mention the mics. Stand by. We'll be right back. With voiceography at its finest. It's the Fighter's Voice. You just tuned it in. Global and worldwide. Hit me on the one with no delay. Because it's the Fighter's Voice. 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 The Fighter's Voice. With your fighting host, Richard Ortiz. And the formidable co-host, Mr. Cole Escobedo. Remember, every fighter has a voice. And we're back, Fresno, California, inside of Mad Studio Productions, the new studio here of the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio Show and the Fighter's Voice Kick-Ass Podcast. You know what? So we have a recap going on right here, but my man can't wait. So look, Bobby Salazar's right here. Look, Bobby Salazar's the best salsa in town. Whenever you want salsa, whenever you want a good meal, whenever you want good entertainment to watch and take care of yourself and indulge, Go to Bobby Salazar's. Don't go down to the other guys. Don't go down to the stuff that's made in New York City. Go down to Bobby Salazar's and tell them the fighter's voice sent you. Now, we got some also some knockout salsa coming by the champ himself, the Jose Ramirez mm -hmm. fireball knock you out salsa. We tried to buy some, honestly. I went to food for, oh, I don't even want to plug a store. Went to the store and they didn't have any more, which means it's so popular. Oh, wow. It's so in demand. Rick Morigan is doing wonders right there. He probably bought the whole case and so he can put them on eBay and double them and triple them. That's just brilliant right there. No, actually, he's in Vegas negotiating here's MGM the thing. Grand. Here's the thing. Even if he did that, That's even smart. if he did, yes. you're still talking about how it's a sold-out product. Absolutely. You don't know if that happened. All you know is it's a sold-out product. That's all that matters. Exactly. Exactly. And when also that matters, check this out, guys. Look. We got this right here, Lalo's boxing. Lalo's boxing right here. He proudly backs up the fighter's voice. Oh, this is your show. No, there, there it is. The fighter's voice, knockout radio. The fighter's voice, kick-ass podcast. See, there's printing on the front. The, the side, thumbs up for Richie. Lalo's boxing, 25 bucks, man. Hit me up. And don't, and don't start saying 25 bucks is a lot. Because I see other people selling for 20 bucks, and there's only print in the front. But I get it. It's a fundraiser. Man, check this out, man. Be part of the fighter's voice. If I see you wearing this right here, man, I'm going to put you on Instagram. I'm going to put you on Twitter. I may just give you some free tickets, man. I may do something special for you if I see you, you wearing know, it. You know, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you we can wrangle tickets to an upcoming local show that every shirt you buy gets you a ticket into a Ooh, drawing like giveaway that. for I seats like to an upcoming local show. It's got to be like, local, too, because I we like can that. help support the local show and send you to a local show. You know what I mean? As a, as exactly. A fan, send exactly. you to a local show. Exactly. So that's not a bad idea. No, well, you know what? I, so not only know, is that 25 bucks getting you a t-shirt, it's supporting the fighter's voice, it's also getting you a chance to win tickets to go and support local fighters. 
Not only that, I want to bring a fan, just just a random fan on the show. I want yeah. to give them a segment, talk to them, see what's really going on. Some that really follows us, and I want to hear what they know about boxing and MMA. And if they want to go tit for tat, let's go. Call it fan speak, Mike. If you're out there, don't call me or text me or inbox me. We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that. But I do want to say this. I do want to talk about this recap. Recap at the five five nine fights. It was awesome. It was a great event. The Fighters Voice team was there in the main event. Uh, it was for the Camel State title, and it was taken back to San Jose. Taken back to San Jose. The guy from San was Jose. Really? Yeah, it was. Mm, bummer. I, I, I know it, it was, but hey, this guy came to work, though, man. I mean, he, he, he really they, did. Like I said, uh, we, we talked on this last time with uh, Jeremy's show. You don't reach high double-digit shows by just putting on mediocre shows. No. No fanfare, no fighter fare. Like, there's fighters constantly trying to find out how they can get on the next camo card signed up for Bro, five, five, there was 13 fights, and only two or three went the distance. Exactly. They were all knockout. You, we literally saw a guy go to sleep. We literally see, seen a guy get knocked out twice because he was out. He hit him again and woke him up, and then he, and then he put a Mimi. Bro, twice. <laughs> knocked him out and then slept him? No, no he was knocked out on his feet. Uh -huh. He got hit with a left hook. He woke up. And then got hit with the right hand and went to sleep. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like knocked him out and then the dude shot in or oh, something. No, and then he said, no, oh. no, no, no. Hey, you know what? The matchmaker, <laughs> Camel does a good job of the matchmaking. They did a great job. Oh, but, yeah. but, I, but I do, I do want to say uh, Tony uh, Charles from San Jose uh, took a unanimous decision over Fresno's Albert Big Al Gonzalez. Mm. But you know what? Al Gonzalez was, was it was a bloodbath. But you well, know, the, I was say, to but, win a decision, yeah, exactly. But the crowd started yelling, Al, Al, Al. And man, he was able to get up, show some heart, throw down as much as he could. But I mean, the dude from San Jose, uh, Charles, he was no joke. He was no joke. I interviewed him afterwards, and I guess he had some bad advice with Fresno. He said he didn't get the right promotion, that mm. he was just there to be an opponent because he was kind of oh. salty on the interview. But I let him know this. I said, hold on a second, bro. I go, this is my interview. You hear with the fighter's voice. Every fighter has a voice, and so do you. I'm the one interviewing you, so I'm showing you love. So then he kind of caught himself, and he says, Richard, I like what, what you're doing right here. Inbox me. I'm going to uh, share it and so forth here in San Jose because we're not, we're not here just trying to get Fresno, Cole. We're trying to no, get global. Yeah, but, but I understand is the – my thing is, why complain? Like he won exactly. But even, even if he lost, even if he lost, okay. okay. Even on the global level stage, this is just camo. All Amateur. the way up to the yes. global level stage of promotions, when you're brought from out of town, out of country, like they don't fly you in or bring you into that part of the country to fight their guy to win. Yeah, like exactly. every time you go fight somewhere else against another opponent that you were brought to fight. You have to assume that you're not going to get promoted properly. You're not going to get any notoriety. You, you'd be lucky if you get a radio or a phone interview while you're in town, yeah. depending on even how what level you are on the card. So to be upset that you don't feel you got the proper time of promotion, it's like at some point it's like uh, it's an amateur card. They're going to spend so much on promotion. They've got a big card. I could see he was the co-main. He should have gotten some of. I do agree with that aspect. Yeah. But – to complain about really, it's like at the end of the day, go well, yeah, dude, that's kind of on you though too. You, you know what? Exactly. You know, we had a conversation last week about my man here, Ochoa. I don't see him on a billboard. I don't see him on a commercial. I don't see him getting the, in my opinion, the exposure that he needs, the sponsorship that he needs. And yet he still puts his nose to the grind. He's in a position right now where he needs to start making moves. After he wins in December, and then takes on a, a tough opponent that's gonna loft him into where he needs to be sky's the limit my man like i mean no joke dude like you should have a gopro or a video blog that you do while you're at your camp especially since you're gonna have an out-of-town camp leaving for camp day one here's what we're bringing with us um maybe a quick video of the trip down day one at the camp what your room's gonna be like what your living situation is gonna be like what your training situation is gonna be like here's camp i mean it's not like all the time it's just Hey, here's an update today. Training's done for the afternoon. We're eating lunch right now. Here's what we did this morning. Here's how camp's going. Faces I've seen, guys I've seen coming in and out of the camp, things like that. There might be a day where you're like week three into the yeah. camp or something. Some dude comes in, like a big somebody just comes in for the day to say hi, take photos, does an interview or something. And you're like, man, you're not going to believe who was here today, blah, blah, blah. And things like that. And that gives you exposure, things like that. So these are things that fighters hey. can do on their own that will get them that extra exposure. That What it does is it makes you too valuable to not have. You are now, I, I saw it in, what was it, um, the Spider-Man movie. The, uh, Michael Keaton was firing yeah. the guy. He's like, I can't afford your, your antics. I can't yeah. afford your BS. You're fired. And he goes, 
well, you think you can afford me out there in the streets? Implying that like, I'm going to tell the cops on you. I'll tell your wife what you really do. Yeah. All this other stuff. He's like, you're right. I can't afford you out there. So you have to make yourself that valuable. You have to make yourself such a commodity to top rank as a signed fighter uh -huh. that they can't afford to let somebody else have you because you're now starting to become a marketable, self-branding, self-promoting entity that has an undefeated you record. Need to. You make, you're not making noise. But you're making noise in the sense that people will start following your videos. You're going out there and doing it on your own. Plus, at some point, when you start promoting yourself more than they are as an undefeated fighter, they start to look at their guys and going, "Hey, uh, why aren't we? Why aren't we pronouncing Isidro like this? Like, why is why am exactly. I only seeing this? Why aren't we? Why don't we have a watermark on this? Why isn't this exactly. on our website? Like, do we have the rights to this? Was this us? Do we? Yeah. No, he did that on his own, boss. Why? Why is he doing it on his own? Just get somebody on that for him. But doing it on your own is you have a Twitter account, like. Anytime you're going to start a new social media thing, like everybody has a Facebook, um, I've got a Twitter. But if I were to start like an Instagram account and I was a fighter, the Instagram account would be solely for things like that. Things solely I'm doing with fight stuff. Not, hey, I'm out at the clubs or hey, I'm at Save Mart today. It's here's what's going on with Fight Camp. Here's an announcement. Here's a new sponsor. Here's a radio spot I'm doing. Here's the info. Mm -hmm. That's all it's for. So that way, everybody wants to stay up to date on when Isidro stuff's going, especially during camps and stuff. They got to go to that exactly. Instagram or whatever it is, whatever new. Exactly. It's something new that you're starting, a new social media account that is directly solely sponsored in for that stuff. And that's kind of just what you This do. is all good stuff right here. You, you see some of those fighters, and you probably think they're flamboyant or why are they always talking. No, Isidro, if you don't promote yourself, who is? There's only so much that your manager is going to do, that your promoter is going to do, and they do it during the time of boxing. That's their job. You need to take charge, grab your career by the balls, and say, look, this is who I am. I um, strongly believe in what I can do and when I can get down and start your account. I will. Yeah, and get it going right now. Yeah. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to um, – Go to commercial break. We're going to come back, and I do want to touch up on the contender. We had two local 559 fighters on there. Just go at it. When I say 559, area code, not 559 fights, fighters. And we'll be coming right back here on the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio Show. Oh, it ain't over yet, but we got to keep the lights on around here, not to mention the mics. Stand by. We'll be right back. With voiceography at its finest. It's the Fighter's Voice. You just tuned it in. Global and worldwide. Hit you on the one with no delay. Because it's the, the Fighter's voice. Voice, voice, voice. The Fighter's Voice. With your fighting host, Richard Ortiz. And the formidable co-host, Mr. Cole Escobedo. Remember, every fighter has a voice. Ladies and gentlemen, every fighter has a voice, and we do too here in Fresno, California with the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio Show official studio. You know what? Before we go on, I want to talk about the Contender Series, a great series. It's awesome. We have two of our local fighters, Daniel Al Chapolin Baldivia, and we got Marcos Madman Hernandez. Marcos Madman Hernandez from Fresno, California. Daniel from Tulare, California. You know who both of these guys are. Did you have a chance to watch the Contender Series? Did you get a chance to see them fight on the Contender Series? No, I didn't. I didn't get to watch it. I will say this. I've been watching the Contender Series, and they had three fights, maybe four so far. And you could always tell one had skill set and one didn't, or you can just tell one of them didn't have skill set. But I tell you this. When Daniel came to fight, 
when Marcos came to fight, my gosh, you can just see the skill set of both of them. And it says a lot for our Valley. It says a lot for our trainers. It says a lot for our area right here. They put it down. I mean, that fight I wish would have taken place in the, in the finale in Las Vegas. Those guys threw down. They threw down constantly, man. Daniel landed some shots. Madman landed some shots. Pushed, pushed the pace completely. One thing I'll say about Madman, you see his frame and he's lanky. He's, he's actually pretty slick. He's a great boxer. Of course. A beautiful left hook. Off the jab, the way it comes, almost coming like a De La Hoya, like a 45. I mean, beautiful. And I noticed Daniel, he wasn't really dancing around. He went flat-footed because he's at 160 now as if to say, hey, I came here to fight. I'm not going to be dancing around and moving around. They were great fight. That's all I got to say. Great fight and a very close fight. That's what I heard. It was a really good fight, and it was also really close. Very close, too. I heard that. At first, they gave him a divia, but... They you know what? I, you know, that happens. The, the, they made a mistake in the scorecards. So they announced uh, Daniel Valdivia as the winner. He goes back to his dressing room. He's jumping up and down. Everything's right there. Madman goes back with his head down. You cannot play with people's emotions at the highest level wow. ever, ever. And then bring them back and say, hey, uh, my bad. I mean, Daniel was just crushed. Uh, Marcos was just, he was relieved, but he kind of felt for Daniel, well, too. yeah, if you lost a fight, you're backstage accepting the fight loss with your team. To hear that you won, yeah, you're excited, but you're more confused and like, well, wait, well, does that, what happened to that guy? Because you know that they're feeling the exact opposite. And the way Daniel handled it, class act, class act. And uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was great. I, I just, I love watching it, man. It was, it was just awesome. Also, I want to talk about... This is what I want to talk about. I mean, what can you do at that point? You can't really. No, you can't I mean, really do much, no, man. I mean, you, you can have do, to you be can... professional. You just have to be like, it is what it is. Mistakes happen. Yeah. This is an unfortunate one. But, but they, they went on. And I want to talk about some things coming up. Saturday in California, professional boxing, all star boxing. It's called Battle of the Rising Stars. They're going to bring some action, night of boxing. It's going to take place in the LA area. The LA area, the Riverside, all star boxing. Listen, man. Tune into that. All-Star Boxing, they, they got it going on. Also, I'm going to talk, be talking to Ed Holmes because he got some promotions coming up in the Riverside area, in the L.A. area. And uh, we want to cover not just Fresno, but we want to cover as much as we can, even some global things around the area. The sport. This Friday, the Fighters Voice Knockout Team is going to be in Oakland, California. Arco Arena. Oh, yeah. Arco Arena, top-ranked boxing live on ESPN. I'm going to be there to watch Jerwin, my man. Yeah. Jerwin. Biba Jerwin. What's up, Sean, Sean Gibbons? <laughs> Sean Gibbons. Hey, no, this dude is uh, Sean Gibbons, man. He's global. Mm -hmm. He's all over the world, bro. All over the world. And he'll, he'll stop and say, I want to say what's up to the fighter's voice. Thumbs up for Richie. He had Manny Pacquiao oh, cool. say thumbs yeah, up for yeah. Richie. Okay, I see what you're... I, I was yes, yes, he's going to be in Oakland, man. The dude's cool, man. He's everywhere. I mean, he's a big uh, follower of the show. He's a believer in the show. And somebody at that high capacity, just to be so down to earth, man, I can't wait to uh, break bread with him. So, Sean, I'm going to see you Friday, man, after the fights. We're going to get that... Uh, Victory interview, that post-fight interview with Mr. Jerwin, and then when he kicked back, man, and tell some jokes, man. You can tell me about the, the little doll Woody you got with all the gold chains and stuff, man. <laughs> got to get you a new, a new shirt too, man. No, Sean's crazy, man. He's uh, follow him at Knucklehead, at Knucklehead. Sean got it going on. I like it. It's 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 awesome stuff, man. Also, I want to talk about Hanford, California. We got a, we got some amateur shows coming up, man. Where's my list at? Okay, yes, amateur shows. Richard Torres Sr. The it's the 18th Classic. That it's the ninth. I'm sorry, the ninth annual Richard Torres Classic in Tulare, California. The 27th and 28th Amateur Boxing. The Fighters Voice team will be there, and yours truly be ring announcing. I want to give back to the community. Nice. So whenever I ask for sponsors, you know, like Bobby Salazar, I appreciate that. I'm not gonna ask for anything that I'm not willing to do. And, you know, I do it. I, I mean it. I don't expect anything back. But any time I can make a difference in these kids' lives, for a lot of them, they never had their name announced because they're amateurs, mm -hmm. like a professional. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm a professional, but just their, but their name under the feeling, lights. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to give these little kids goosebumps, man. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to take you with me. Oh, Choa, kick go. it back, kick back with me, you know? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I mean, dude, we'll get back a, to him. A young boxer get to hang out with an undefeated professional boxer is got to be the equivalent of a young kid playing baseball getting to go and hang out with a Yankees pitcher for the what, day. What are you eating right now, Dill? I'm, I'm eating this really hot, spicy Bobby Salazar sauce. Is it good though, dude? It's good, but it's so hot, dude. The only way I would explain this is like, tell uh, us, tell us how good that is, bro. 
it's like having a really hot girlfriend who cheats on you all the time. Oh, it's you know it's no good for you, but dude, it tastes so good, but it burns. <laughs> like it's one bite, chew, and like I have to have some water. Exactly. But I know in a couple minutes I'm gonna have some more. It's always that three a.m. text. <laughs> Wait, of, hey, what are you doing? Nothing, demon, go away. But no, okay. it's three a.m. What are you doing? <laughs> so in a couple minutes you're gonna have some more. Not even a couple minutes, bro. Like I'll drink with water. I'll yeah. have some more. It's, there you it's go. Vicious cycle, bro. So Bobby Salazar's best salsa in town. The chips are gone. There you go. You like the salsa, Ochoa? Yeah, it's really good. Bobby Salazar's, baby. I Bobby bought Salazar's. a bag of chips. Yeah, I know you did. At home, just so I could eat the salsa, I put it on my burrito. Oh, my God, that was a mistake, bro. So hot. So good. You can't help it. I got a text today from our, our, our board person. See? She, she didn't say, Richard, are you going to be on the show? What are you going to talk about? Hey, you got this. You got your game face on. Rouse running late. You know what she said? Richard, don't forget my Bobby Salazar salsa. Well, yeah. The lady's got priority. And I'm like, what she the? She knows I, what I time go, it is. I go, you serious? She knows what's up. She got priorities, man. She didn't say, hey, how you doing? How's your work day? You know, are you nervous? She or like, is there anything? Again. She said, did you bring my Bobby? Are you going to bring my Bobby Salazar salsa? Right. Bring hey, chips. man. Fool. That's the way it is. Also, I want to say, Stockton, California, November 2nd, the beast is back. The beast is back. And that's the guy I was telling you about, man. I mean, this guy, I don't want to tear up his last name, McKernan. 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 I want to say McKernan. Hey, bro, don't beat me up when I see you, okay? I was going to say The beast is back. No, no, he, he no, he will. He will. Blake will, too. No, he won't. He's a nice guy, man. And also, Kilo the Kid Madera is back in action. Back in action. Already? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But hey, he's on the he's the co-main event. Nice. And also so right, heck, right back on the horse. Right back on there. And that's Good. the way to do it. You know, you get a defeat, you get back in there. Because you because you're you are you are you are sure of yourself. He's in shape. You're ready to go. Hurt. He can't it's, wait, man. And you know what? I serious, bro. I feel sorry wherever he fights, man. Oh yeah. He's about to just violate. Well, them. he's gonna go in there and try to make a statement that whatever. Oh, he's definitely gonna make a statement. And I, uh, a hiccup. It was a mistake. It he's was he's a definitely fluke. gonna make a statement. No, Hector no. Madera is also on the card. Hector's another fighter. He reminds me of a Mexican Terry Norris, but I like to see him come down maybe two weight classes. The last time I saw him, I believe it was one forty. I like to see him come down to maybe at least. 130s. Is that what that is class 130s? Have a little jiggle. Yeah, 130s. Or what? No, no, guy just I mean his neck is like a fire hydrant mm -hmm. and he just comes in banging. I mean just lets him go. I mean in lateral movement and Do you think he can move faster than in a Oh, absolutely. Class? Absolutely. At a lighter weight class, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And and he's rehabbing a, a knee injury which he's so young the tissue just healed instantly yeah. and he he's yeah. okay. No cadavers. No, nah, no. And also we got Angel Cordon. Angel Cordon. What? Cordona. You know what? Last time Andy Vences uh, checked me last time. Cordona. Yeah, Are you sure Cordona. it's Cordona? I, yeah, man, I keep chopping up these names, man. I'm guessing. Chopping oh, now you're like, guessing. Chopping them up like a credit card. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's another Toscano Boxing Promotions with Dog Boxer Athletics right here. See that right here? I don't endorse too much stuff, really. I, Bro, let, let me say this. And, and just so do you, I got a closet full of shirts, bro. I give them away oh, to the bro. kids at school. And there's only so many things that I'll rock. I'll rock this gear right here. I have that one, too. Dying Breed Apparel. Mm. Let me see who I... I got a hat. I got my own back. I like their hats, but I haven't heard from them in a while. Bro, come on, dog. What's happening? And also, Style Make Fights. Mm. I haven't heard from them in a while. Bro, I got a bone to pick with you, dog. You went to go interview freaking Triple D, and you couldn't get a hold of me, my man? Uh-oh. And I'll just play my man. Hey. Uh, we'll, we'll make it up. I'll let you make it up, man. We'll get together. We'll knock this whole thing out together. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a nice recap coming on. I mean, this is the part of the show where we have fun. We talk boxing. We talk salsa. We talk sponsorship. We talk gear. We talk about the gear that we're selling. But this time, I want to talk about the Fighters Voice live stream team. They're behind the scenes. They're making it happen. They make it happen so we can kind of shine. It went blank right there, bro. So I don't know how much time we got. How much time we got? Oh, we got 20 seconds, my man. We, what else do you want to talk about? A Bible verse or something? Or you want to talk about that lady who cut you off right there? Or you want to talk? You want me to tell you where you're really fighting? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Hey, if you want, if you want, you can tell us when we come back. We're going to take a commercial break. Come back here with the Fighter's Voice live stream team knockout radio show. Oh, it ain't over yet. But we got to keep the lights on around here, not to mention the mics. Stand by, we'll be right back with Voiceography at its finest. It's the Fighter's Voice.
You just tuned it in. Global and worldwide. Hit me on the one with no delay. Because it's the Fighter's Voice. 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 The Fighter's Voice. With your fighting host, Richard Ortiz. And the formidable co-host, Mr. Cole Escovito. Remember, every fighter has a voice. And you can have a voice, too, at thefightersvoice.com. We're going at the Fighters Voice on IG. I can go on and on. But you know what? I want to give the attention to our guest right here. Is there anybody in particular you want to give a shout-out to? Is there anything you want to say, address to all the fans that follow Mr. Isidro, undefeated, top-ranked, professional Ochoa? Give a shout out to main event Jim Fresno. Wait, who, wait, wait, who? You speak up to the mic, man. I want to give a shout out to main event Fresno and. Main I heard Jim. you the first time, buddy. I know main events Jim exactly. It's Coach Tommy, Tommy, baby. Tommy Alvarez, that's my trainer. That's right. Uh, Robert Garcia uh, Boxing Academy with uh, Robert Garcia. Oh, that's what's up, Robert Garcia, number love. Hey, we're gonna talk about that when you get that phone jack hooked up, and uh, we're gonna talk about that phone interview, man. Yeah, so like I said before, uh, two weeks. Go back leaving. Get it back, get it back, gotta get back in shape. And, Where are you going? Uh, Riverside, I'll be training in Riverside. Cool. Is that, it's gonna be a living camp, right? You were talking yeah, about that? It's gonna be a living camp uh, for probably like seven to eight weeks. Dude, that's a long time. That's a full camp on uh, at that's dude. That's gonna be a focused fight, dude. Exactly, two months. I like it. I like that whole fight camp leads up to the fight. You don't even come home till after the fight, then. Exactly. I like it. That's I, good. I like it. That's good. I mean, no, you don't hear from me. You're going to keep us up to date on that, right? We'll be able to check out what's going on down there with you. You got somewhere you want to tell course. fans and stuff to, to check you out at and stuff? Yeah, cool. Of course, yeah. Good. Let us know so we can share that and let them know. I will. I will. Oh, Cedro got love. I know. That's what I'm saying, man. I want to see <laughs> them camp videos. Every, he always knows everything before anybody else. That's right. Cedro shows love. He even had my back. He didn't. Even, I didn't even get to see it when he had my back. He tagged me and said, Richard, look what I did. He goes, what's up with these guys? Somebody had, they were opinionated about the fighter's voice, but he mm-hmm. see Joe goes, bam, I'm down for the fighter's voice. Everyone, that's what I'm talking about. Everyone's going to be opinionated. Yeah, it's okay. But you know what? That's good, though. Opinion breeds criticism. Criticism breeds construction. That, that right? And it also breeds fire, exactly. ammunition. Thank you. Because you know what? I get, I, get, I, get, I get bored sometimes. So sometimes I'm like, okay, good. Now I'm awake. Mm-hmm. Now I'm awake. Let's ready to go. Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Mm-hmm. And I'm feeling the vibes again. I'm feeling these microphones that are just popping off right now i'm feeling like the it. studio i'm feeling ochoa i'm feeling freaking co escovito kp in the house kp oh you know what we're gonna do? oh you know what let me say this because we only got a little bit of time later on we're going to talk because we're going to do a video shoot of you okay yeah uh, kp's gonna handle that he's gonna set it up professionally and we're gonna put your portrait up there my man so when they walk in it's gonna go pow be, you see Joe Ochoa. You be part of the official studio but, but see, crew and fans. You, you're going to have one paper. of you with your boxing shorts, and also you're going to be G'd up. Mm. So they see two sides of Ochoa. That's what we're going to do. some gold chains. Here at Mad Entertainment Productions, promotions. It's you know, ex- exactly, exactly. I do want to say this, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, the Fighter's Voice Kick-Ass Podcast. The Kick-Ass Podcast. Kick-Ass Podcast. And you know what? We're going to be raffling off the new bottle of whiskey from Conor McGregor. I'm going to bring Ooh. it. I'm going to set it right here. We're going to be Upper raffling well. it off. Yes, I got nice. a couple bottles of those. We're going to be giving that stuff away, and you can get it only on the Fighter's Voice Kick-Ass Podcast. Anything to say in five seconds, my man? Join us for the podcast tomorrow. That's about it, man. I want people to join in and listen. There you go. Five seconds, my man. That's up for Richie. That's right. He took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you. The Fighter's Voice radio show. It's a wrap. Thumbs up for Richie. Never down for the count. It's just another wrap. Thanks for listening to the Fighter's Voice radio show. Catch us again next week. Same when, same how. And always stay connected to the Fighter's Voice on social media. So on behalf of Richard Ortiz, Cole Escovito, our special guests, and the whole crew right here at the Fighter's Voice radio show, saying see ya next week right here on the Fighter's Voice.